panel in a little bit. Rachel, we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Uh, I want to welcome in the all-star political panel on this Wednesday morning. We start with former Maryland congressional candidate Kim Klasik is with us. Political analyst Mark Halperin is here. Project 21 National Advisory Board member Chris Arps back with us and constitutional attorney Amir Benno. Kim, uh, you're joining us for the 8 o'clock panel. I want to start with you. Um, yesterday, this has happened to me a couple of times, and I, I just found myself going to my phone and just impulsively going to President Trump's Twitter and realizing it wasn't there. But as all this was playing out in Washington, I wanted to know what he would have been tweeting. I felt that the American people would have wanted to hear from the president yesterday as well. Absolutely. I agree with you. And it's a shame that he no longer has a Twitter account and that he doesn't have a platform to really speak his mind. Um, but I think he's probably feeling like he's in the clear, as he should, uh, because I don't think they have a case here. What's interesting to me about it is the fact that they continue on about the riots that happened on January 6th. And now we see they have this great big fence in front of the Capitol, but they never said anything about the riots and the burning of buildings that happened across this country for an entire year. Yeah. The difference is those at the Capitol, members of Congress, they have a job to go back to, right? Their paychecks will never stop. But those that had to rebuild their businesses, those employees that couldn't go back to work, they don't long, they no longer have a paycheck. But we're not talking about those cases. We're talking about members of Congress that are always protected by security and still get a paycheck no matter what. They just want Trump to be gone. And I understand because he probably poses a threat politically to them. Um, but again, this impeachment trial is not going to go anywhere. It's a, it, the Constitution, I believe, is on the, uh, the president's side. Mark, I want to play you a soundbite. Uh, Louisiana senator, very red state down there, the state of Louisiana. Uh, Bill Cassidy uh, decided to side with five other Republicans and vote with the Democrats yesterday. I want to play this sound and then get your reaction. Take a listen. The House managers were focused. They were organized. They relied upon both precedent, the Constitution, and legal scholars. They made a compelling argument. President Trump's team were disorganized. They did everything they could but to talk about the question at hand. And when they talked about it, they kind of glided over it, almost as if they were embarrassed of their arguments. All right, so Mark, uh, we'll go to you and then Chris, but I, I, do you think that, that he was swayed in the room yesterday? You know, Louisiana has a long tradition of quirky politicians, and their two senators, Cassidy and Kennedy, are pretty quirky. He said he liked the arguments made by the prosecutors, by the managers. He didn't like the president's defense. It doesn't mean he voted to convict the president, although there is, uh, Rob, a Bloomberg report out just a few minutes ago saying that Mitch McConnell is now telling Republican senators they should vote their conscience on whether to convict the president and hasn't ruled out that he would vote to convict. We obviously need to watch that. But so far, Cassidy is the only one who's shown any change wow. based on what's happened in the room. Wait, Mark, so do you think that's more about 2024 because Mitch McConnell doesn't want to deal with President Trump in four years? He's been trying to calibrate uh, his relationship and the party's relationship with Donald Trump since Election Day, and he's still quite furious on poll about what he sees as Donald Trump's role and what happened in the two Georgia runoff races. So he doesn't want Donald Trump to pick his party's nominees in 2022 for those key Senate races in places like Ohio and Georgia sure. and North Carolina. And sure. I think this is going to be part of the McConnell strategy to toggle back and forth between support and less than support. Chris, what are your thoughts? Well, I think part of uh, of uh, of uh, of Cassidy. I think he may be changing his mind just a little bit. I don't think that he's going to vote to impeach, impeach the president. You know, many people have admitted that the House managers did do a pretty good job yesterday. The, the video was tugged at the heartstrings, and I think it affected him a little bit. But ultimately, as we know, the President Trump will not be convicted. Amir, you're the constitutional attorney. You're the expert. Um, how do you think David Schoen and, and Bruce Castor did yesterday on behalf of the president? I think they needed more focus. I mean, there was arguments focused on the 14th Amendment about upon Rule 23 of the Senate's impeachment rules, which have to do with divisibility of, uh, of the article. Nobody really understands. You know, the television audience doesn't understand what that's about. Um, there were other other legal issues that they were bringing up that really had no place uh, on what yesterday was supposed to be about. Yesterday was supposed to be about, does the Senate have jurisdiction to hear this case? They should have talked about the text of the Constitution. They should have talked about legal precedent. They should have talked about uh, the intention of the framers. And they should have talked about the policy underlying the impeachment provisions in the Constitution. Yeah. They sort of got to all of it, but it was sort of uh, wandering around a little bit. And it wasn't very well structured. And they spent way too much time on some of those categories and 
glossed over some other ones. Had they just been very focused and very pointed and very direct uh, and hit those four categories, I think it would have packed more of a punch. But ultimately, I don't know that it would have made much of a difference besides Senator Cassidy uh, in, in altering the outcome. Uh, Kim, I want to go to you quickly. So David Schoen, uh, the president's attorney who spoke uh, second yesterday, he's an Orthodox Jew. He wasn't wearing a yarmulke in the chamber yesterday. Uh, and as a part of the Jewish faith, you can't eat or drink without a yarmulke on, which is why when he would take a sip of his water, he would cover his head. Uh, Twitter on the left was kind of all over him for that, which I thought was just a, a distraction. But uh, how do you think they, they did yesterday in representing the president, Kim? Um, I think they did fairly well. I mean, you're talking about a case that there, that really there's no ending here that, that the left wants, right? And so no matter what they say, I think the left is going to tear it up, try to spin it around to make it seem like, you know, the president is guilty in some way. So I think they, that they did the best they could. Um, again, I think this is a waste of time. We've got Americans across this country thinking about COVID, thinking about going back to work, thinking about reopening their schools. And here we are watching the theatrics on Capitol Hill as they try to impeach a private citizen. So I think Americans are probably over it. But again, I think they did the best they could. All right. I want to play a soundbite from uh, from David Schoen, the president's attorney, speaking yesterday about the uh, the 74 million Americans that voted for President Trump. I thought he made a good point. Play this and then we'll get the panel's reaction. Take a listen. For a great many Americans see this process for exactly what it is, a chance by a group of partisan politicians seeking to eliminate Donald Trump from the American political scene and seeking to disenfranchise 74 million plus American voters. Christopher Arps, my friend, your thoughts on that? He makes a good point. I do. He does. I think uh, Mr. Schoen was playing to his client, Donald Trump, who was probably watching the proceedings. Right. Um, as we uh, noted earlier, uh, his earlier defense team quit because uh, the president wanted to talk about the stolen election, quote unquote, and they didn't. And so that's why we uh, got the new team. So I think Mr. Schoen was playing uh, to his uh, to his client. Yeah. Uh, guys, the question now and why people watch Wake Up America is what's going to happen today. You're with us after the break. We're going to talk more about the uh, the impeachment and what will happen today. S uh, 16 hours for the House uh, to make their case and 16 hours to defend the president. Panel, I always enjoy the conversation. I wish we could just go on and on. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Trump. All right. You're watching Wake Up America. Stay with us.